Thank you, Mr Speaker. And today, on International Women's Day, we celebrate the successes of women in our society. It's a crying shame that as we do so, we face legislation which drives a coach and horses through our world-leading modern slavery framework, which protects women from exploitation. Mr Speaker, in the last decade, this Government has introduced five plans to tackle illegal immigration, five utter failures. The problem just gets worse with every new gimmick. The Home Secretary says the public are sick of tough talk and inadequate action. Does he agree with her assessment of this Government's record? Well, Mr Mr Speaker, what the Honourable Gentleman fails to recognise is that there is a global migration problem. We are not alone in facing these challenges, and it is precisely because it is precisely because that across Europe the numbers escalating to the extent they are, we have brought forward new plans because we are determined, Mr Speaker, to ensure that this remains a compassionate and generous country, that that is done fairly and legally. That's why we will break the criminal gangs, Mr Speaker. We've announced new agreements with Albania and France, tougher tougher immigration enforcement, and now new legislation that makes it clear that if you come here illegally, you will be detained and swiftly removed. But, Mr Speaker, what we haven't heard is the Honourable Gentleman's plan. We know what it is. It's open-door immigration unlimited asylum. Whilst he may be on the side of the people smugglers, we're on the side of the British people. Mr Speaker, if he was serious about stopping the boats, he'd actually steal our plan on stopping the boats, smash the gangs, sort out the returns and clean up the utter mess. Mr Speaker. I'm going to hear this and nobody's going to... I wouldn't if I were you. But... I think we've heard enough. I want to hear the questions and the answers, and it won't be interrupted. Mr Speaker, nobody on this side of the House wants open borders. On that side, they've lost control of the borders. Now, he's promised the country, he's promised the country that this bill will stop all small boat crossings. No ifs, no buts. Sounds like more talk. So, in the interest of adequate action, when will he achieve that? Yeah. Well, Mr. Speaker, we, 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 Mr. Speaker, we, we'll be implementing this plan as soon as we can pass it through Parliament. So I look forward to the honourable gentleman's support. But the, the reality is, Mr. Speaker, on this issue, it, the, the honourable gentleman has been on the wrong side of this. Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Stafford, if you don't want to hear him, you can go and have a good cup of tea, nice and strong, I suspect. But I will hear him, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the Honourable Gentleman has been on the wrong side of this issue his entire career. He he described all immigration law as racist. He said it was a mistake to control immigration. And he has never, ever voted for tougher asylum laws. It is clear, Mr Speaker, while he's in hock to the open border activists, we're on the side of the British people. Mr Speaker, when I was in charge of prosecutions, I extradited countless rapists and and the the conviction rate for people smuggling was twice what it is today. I voted against his legislation last time because I said it wouldn't work. Since it became law, the numbers have gone up. He's proved me right. He should be apologising, not gloating. The Prime Minister says they will detain people who aren't eligible to claim asylum here and then return them. Well, they already tried that under the last legislation. Last year, 18,000 people were deemed ineligible to apply for asylum. That's the easy bit, the talk. But as for the action, Prime Minister, how many of them have actually been returned? Mr Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, as... uh, as a, resu- as a result of the plans we've brought forward, we have almost doubled the number of people returned this year. But he talked about he talked about laws. He talked about. Uh, that, I think the front bench needs to be a little quieter because I want to hear, and I don't need you joining in. I'm going to. 
And when constituents want to hear the importance of Prime Minister's questions, both the questions for the answers, show our constituents the respect they do. Come on, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, he asked, he, asked, he asked about arrests, he asked about our laws. Actually, when I was in Dover yesterday talking to our law enforcement officials, what did they tell me? Precisely because of the law that the Conservative Government passed last year, they have now been able to arrest more than double the number of people they did before. 197 in the last six months. But stopping the boats, Mr Speaker, stopping the boats is not just my priority. It is the people's priority. But his, posi his position on this is clear. He wanted to, in his words, scrap the Rwanda deal. He voted against measures to deport foreign criminals, Mr Speaker, and he even argued against deportation flights. Well, and we know why, because on this matter, he talked about his legal background. He's just another lefty lawyer standing in our way. We'll continue. When you keep shouting, it prolongs, and some of you are trying to catch my eye. When you're disappointed, I don't want any complaints. Let's get through these questions so we might get some back medicine. Mr Speaker, all that nonsense, because he doesn't want to answer the question, because he knows what the answer is. The number is 21. I thought it was a man of detail. 21. 21 people out of the 18,000. And what happens to the rest? They sit in hotels and digs for months on end at the taxpayers' expense. Last year, he promised to end the hotel farce. That's the talk. But because of his mess, there are thousands of people who can't claim asylum and can't be returned. So where does he actually think they're going to end up? <laughs> Mr Speaker, he talks about the pressure on our asylum system. Right? So, so, it, 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 we, we've actually got a clear plan to stop people coming here in the first place. Mr Speaker, le he, Labour, Labour have absolutely no plan on this issue because they simply don't want to tackle the problem. We introduced, we introduced tougher sentences for people smugglers. They opposed it. We signed a deal with Rwanda. They opposed it. We are deporting foreign offenders as we speak. They oppose it. I'm going to say to the member from Hull, save that good voice for the rugby match. You might be able to join Mr Stafford over that strong cup of tea. Prime Minister. <laughs> Mr Speaker, in fact, the, he opposed every single step of what we've done to try and stop this problem. In fact, his only, his only contribution to this debate, well, we know what it is. In his own words, what did he say? We will defend free movement. That's the Labour Party for you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, he stood there last year saying exactly the same thing. We said it wouldn't work. They passed the law. The numbers went up. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely deluded. Exactly. Um, he can't say where they'll return people because they spent £140 million on Rwanda and it doesn't work. Yeah. They can't say how they'll return people because this bill doesn't come with a single new return agreement. Exactly. And they can't say when they'll fix the mess because it's more talk, more gimmicks, more promises exactly. to be broken. Yeah. Now, a few months ago, I put to him that of the people who arrived on small boats, only 4% had been processed. He stood there and said, that's unacceptable. What's the number now? Ah. Mr. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, as a, re as, a, as, a result, as a result of what we've done, there are now 6,000 fewer people in the caseload of asylum backlog. We're hiring more caseworkers. We're increasing their productivity. And again, he's mistaken when it comes to returns, Mr Speaker, because we do have returns agreements with India, with Pakistan, with Serbia, with Nigeria, and crucially, now with Albania, where we are returning hundreds of people, Mr Speaker. But look, our position on this is clear. If you arrive here illegally, you will not be able to claim asylum here. You will not be able to access the modern slavery system, and you will not be able to make spurious human rights claims. That is the right thing to do. But he's simply he's going on and on about process, hiding behind process, because he doesn't want to confront the substance. We are the party of fairness, and he represents the party of free movement. I thought he was supposed to be the man of detail. He's gone to all that lens to avoid the detail. He knows the answer to the question. Less than 1% of those arrived by boats have been processed. 
He shakes his head. It's the government's own statistic. On his watch, on his watch, processing of those boat cases has gone from unacceptable, in his words, to almost non-existent. And doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? After 13 years, small boat crossings higher than ever, claims unprocessed, the taxpayer paying for hotel rooms, criminal gangs running all the way, laughing to the bank, and an asylum sister utterly broken on his watch. This is their fifth Prime Minister, their sixth immigration plan, their seventh Home Secretary, and after all this time, all they offer is the same old gimmicks and empty promises. I don't agree with the Home Secretary on very much, but when she says that the Tories are all talk and no action, she's spot on, isn't she? Uh, Mr Speaker... Prime Minister. Mr Speaker... Illegal immigration enforcement, up. The amount of people processing claims, up. The backlog is down. The number of returns agreements is up. New, new, hundreds of people returned to Albania and now new laws to detain and deter illegal migrants. It's clear what we stand for, Mr Pisco. We're doing what's right. We are acting with compassion. We are acting with fairness. And we are acting to respect the laws and borders of our country. We are delivering what we said. And it's crystal clear, listening to this, Mr Speaker, that it's going to be the Conservatives and only the Conservatives that stop the boats. Yeah.